can we begin tonight with breaking news? Right now, Indianapolis Metro Police are investigating a deadly shooting. It happened inside a plasma center on the east side of Indianapolis near East 36th Street and North Post Road. Our Chase Howell joins us live from that spot. So Chase, what have you learned? Scott and Marie, I want to show you what's going on behind me right now. As you can see, police are still investigating that deadly shooting at Biomat USA Plasma Center. The people sitting next to the building are workers and people who were donating plasma that were inside at the time of that shooting. Now, you'll see the command van here. Because there were so many witnesses here, they brought that in to take their statements down. And I spoke to some of those witnesses. A woman tells me her daughter works here and she says a man walked inside with a gun and went towards the back of the building and that's when he began shooting at another man. And now I spoke to Tracy Brown who was in the front of that building when the shooting happened. He says he heard about five or six pops and that's when him and a lot of other people ran into the bathroom to seek safety. And now he tells me when those shots were fired, his heart skipped. People out there, man, life is too short for this killing. We need, we need to put them guns down, man, and live life, honestly, because God put us on earth, man, to live, not to kill each other. To, keep, to recap what we know right now, one man is dead. Another person has been taken into custody who is believed to be the shooter. Now, I want to show you Post Road right now between 34th and 38th. As you can see, there are tiny delays, but nothing too crazy. So if you're heading into the area and you're watching this from TV at work, make sure if you're coming to the area in the next few hours that you take an alternate route. Again, one man is dead and a person of interest is, has been taken into custody. All right, Chase Hell reporting live on the east side of Indianapolis tonight. Thanks so much. Tonight at 5, we're starting to learn what the suspect in the Delphi murders told investigators when they interviewed him. And the jury today got to see videos of those interviews in court. And these were interviews surrounding the deaths of the two teens, Abby Williams and Libby German. Our senior investigative reporter Bob Siegel in the courtroom today as those videos play. And Bob just stepped out of the Carroll County Courthouse and joins us live tonight at 5. Bob, what'd you learn? Scott and Ann, those videos were played this morning. I want to share with you actually what's been happening for just the last few hours inside the courtroom. This afternoon, the jury has been hearing confessions, all about confessions that Richard Allen made while in prison. Not one confession, but several of them. The uh, afternoon's first witness, it was the former warden at the Westville Correctional Facility. John Gallipo told the jury Richard Allen spoke to him several times while Allen was in a suicide watch cell at the maximum security prison. He said one of the times he talked to Allen, Allen verbally confessed to the murders, telling Gallipo he disposed of a box cutter that he used in the murders and that he disposed of that in a dumpster. He also said Allen wrote him a note saying, I am ready to officially confess to killing Abby and Libby and that he looked forward to apologizing to their families. And that note was shown to the jury. Then jurors heard from prison guards assigned to suicide watch outside Allen's cell. They told the jury they heard Allen make several more confessions. Corrections officer Michael Clemens told the jury what he overheard Allen saying. He logged in his notes, Offender says, God, I'm so glad no one gave up on me after I killed Abby and Libby. And I, Richard Matthew Allen, killed Abby and Libby by myself. No one helped me. Another corrections officer, Michael Roberts, told the jury that he heard Allen say, I want to confess. I know a lot more. And why are you doing this? Do you know God? Do you know why I'm here? I killed Abby and Libby. The state pushed back on the testimony, asking the warden and the guards about Allen's mental health at the time that he made those statements, painting a picture of conditions inside the maximum security prison as a place that drove Allen to serious mental health problems at the time of the confessions. The jury will be hearing more confessions, including Allen's own voice from some phone calls he made to his family. Now to this morning's testimony where the jury got to watch the videos of Richard Allen being interrogated right before his arrest. Jurors could see how Allen responded to those interrogations by police and for the most part, he remained relatively calm. 
Um, once police made it clear to Allen that he was the subject of their uh, investigation, that he was a primary suspect, that they wanted to inspect both his phone and serve a search warrant at his house. That's when things started to get tense and more heated. But throughout most of the questioning, um, Allen remained poised, even when state police investigator Jerry Holman was screaming at him, accusing him of being a murderer. Allen said over and over, I did not murder two little girls. You're trying to convince me to confess to something I didn't do. Dozens and dozens of times he said that during the two interviews, maintaining his innocence throughout both of the interrogations. And again, the jury got to see exactly how Allen responded and his demeanor, which will be important uh, in them making a decision on whether or not uh, he is guilty in this case. We're going to have more about the interrogations, more about the confessions that the jury is still hearing about in court right now. That will be coming up on 13 News at 6. For now, we'll send it back to the studio. Back to you. Yeah, really interesting day in court. We'll see you tonight at 6. Bob, thanks so much. Bob will be joining us later tonight for Delphi Debrief. That program streams every weeknight at 10 over on WTHR+. Emily Longnecker is there as well, and she also will join us and be part of our team coverage as we provide a more in-depth look at the key moments during the day's testimony. You can find WTHR+, on Apple TV, Roku, and also on Fire Stick.